Hello, today's topic is sampling theorem for low pass signals. We know that in sampling a continuous time signal is converted to a discrete time signal. So there is a sampler. which converts a continuous time signal or analog signal into discrete time signal okay so we'll take one example signal x of t suppose it looks like this and we want to sample that signal so we'll take samples like We multiply this with a train of impulses like this. So we have uniform time interval, sampling time interval it is called as Ts. So this is Ts, this is integer multiple of Ts, 3Ts, 4Ts and so on. This is minus Ts, so this signal becomes x of n Ts. And in discrete time signal, we take only the amplitudes present at these points. So the discrete time signal is collection of amplitudes only. Like this. So, what are the basic requirements that should be fulfilled in case of sampling? In sampling, the sampled version should represent the original signal very faithfully and the second requirement is we should be able to reconstruct the original signal, the signal from the sampled version. So, if you want to connect this points. So you can see this is same as this continuous time signal. So we are able to get back this continuous time signal. Now what is the importance of sampling? So we know that in digital communication we require discrete time signal also uh, now in this digital age. Uh, all the signals are in digital form so in the process of digitization the first step is sampling second step is quantization so for digital signal processing sampling is a very basic step we'll take some examples of signals different signals and see how how we can sample that signals so we take first a sine wave like this and we will sample the same sine wave with different sampling frequencies. You know that Ts is the sampling interval. So Fs is equal to 1 upon Ts. This is sampling frequency. So I choose a very low Ts means high sampling frequency for this first wave. So the points will be like this. Then I choose a little bit larger Ts. Like this. And next time I choose a bit larger. So some third sample will be like this. So in this, a second requirement that should be able to get back the original signal from the sampled version is not possible in this case. It is possible in these two cases. So you can sample a signal with different sampling rates. So what is the condition that this should not happen with the general signal that we, uh, we should be able to get back the original signal 
from its sampled version so there should be some criteria on the selection of the sampling frequency or the sampling interval so we'll see another example we'll take a wave which has higher frequency so you can't choose sample very having very large sampling interval like this we should choose sampling interval very low means sampling frequency higher so this signal is having high frequency it requires higher sampling frequency so the fs is dependent on the signal frequency we'll take one more example suppose that signal is a combination of two different frequencies at two different intervals like this so we should choose sampling interval based on this frequency not on this frequency low frequency so and go on sampling the signal with the reference to this frequency not with the reference to the lower frequency so we have to see always what is the largest frequency component present in the signal so the sampling frequency depends on the largest frequency present in the signal so we'll call that frequency as fm so fm is the maximum frequency component present in the signal so fs have some relationship with fm that is final fs depends on fm okay fs depends on fm so what is that relationship that relationship was introduced by shannon in 1949 that is called as sampling theorem or it is also called as uh, shannon's theorem for sampling uh, low pass signals why low pass because maximum frequency component is present in case of low pass signals so for low pass signal you can tell the cut off frequency means maximum frequency present in the signal so from that you can guess fs f fm and from that you can calculate fs so what is that relationship which is called as sample uh, nyquist rate that fs and fm relationship so that relationship is given as fs should be greater than or equal to twice the maximum frequency component present in the signal if the sampling frequency is chosen with this relationship we can get back the continuous time signal from its sampled version of the signal provided that the signal is band uh, low pass signal so this is the relationship uh, we'll take proof of this relationship in our next lecture by viewing the frequency domain what happens in frequency domain when we sample the signal and how the relationship uh, affects uh, the signal that is over sampled signal or under sampled signal what are the bad effects that one effect is called as aliasing so how aliasing occurs we'll see in the next lecture thank you